when there's shadows everywhere and where the air is still and quiet is very frightening. I, I look at the, the beds and then I try to imagine over the years that this place functioned as a, as a barrack in the concentration camp, how many people came through here? Dear father and mother, we had to get up at 5.30 in the morning. At a quarter to six, we have to stand in line for food. Around 6.30, we have to be at the workplace. At seven o'clock, we have to start. There's a freezing cold wind blowing so early in the morning. This cold chills you to the bone. I am strong and healthy. Flip. From Flip. After spending a night in Auschwitz, the morning feels a little bit surreal. The morning feels that it's not quite real. I'm very conflicted about meeting Rainer, the grandson of the Commandant Rudolf Huss. And I'm conflicted because his grandfather was responsible for the murder of my entire family. His grandfather was responsible for the murder of more than one million Jews who died in Auschwitz. And even if his grandfather didn't physically pull the trigger, his grandfather commanded the camp that saw most of European Jewry die. Rainer Hoss. Hi. Nice to meet you. I'm Paula Slea. Very nice to meet you too. I lost a lot of family in Auschwitz, so I am a little bit conflicted about meeting you, but I, I find it remarkable that you have a message to share and each of us is responsible only for our actions and you cannot yeah. be held responsible for your grandfather. My family or the re my aunts, uncles and the rest denying the Holocaust. How can I deny things like that? And for me it was my choice not to be part of that family. The evil for me is my grandfather. And I, I am lucky while they hung him. What do you think about what's happening in the world today, the rise of anti-Semitism, the revival of neo-Nazism in so many parts of Europe? I think it's bigger than ever. So I stated many years ago that the right-wing movements or the parties, like today we call them Le Pen, we call them NPD, we call them the National Front, UKIP, whatever else we will call them. And I said it many years before, that they will get in power, they will raise in power. Do you think the Holocaust could happen again? Yeah, of course. See right now the Muslims. So I get another example, my oldest daughter married in summer a Muslim. So I can never forgive your grandfather for what he did to my family. And, I, and you're not asking me to. And I can never forget what your grandfather did. I, I would can... not ask for it. Why would you want to meet me? I think it's, it is important to build bridges. And I think to, to met my generation or younger generation, maybe we found solutions to deal with it together, to show the folks around there is something we can heal. We cannot get back, back in the past. But on the end, without the camera, I show you something. I don't know if you know it. No. These are numbers of survivors. Survivors that you know? Yeah, and I'm close, very, very close with. Maybe we see us again. <laughs> Goodbye. Bye. My family died because of people like his grandfather. And so it's not an easy 
feeling that sits with me, that's sitting on my heart right now, having met him. I, I'm shaking his hand. I know he's not personally responsible, but it's because of people like his grandfather that I'm standing here. I'm not forgiving what his grandfather did, not for one moment. Pa and Ma, you must understand that if we could be together, I would not hesitate for one moment. See you in Amsterdam. Flip. From Flip. This is your first time to come to Amsterdam. This is the first time you came to Amsterdam. This is the first time. And what are you thinking? What are you thinking? What are the thoughts that are coming to you? It's a lot. Very bad. אני פוחד שיהיה עוד פעם מה שהיה. and prayer. Never again! It was Hitler's intention to annihilate all of European Jewry. And when he took my family and others into the camps, he gave them numbers if he didn't gas them straight away. He didn't want us to have a name. He didn't want us to have a life. He didn't want us to have an identity. And I've come back and I've said, well, there was a person in my family by the name of Flip Slayer. And I'm marching for him. And I'm marching for 119 members of my family who did have names. And you might have wanted to obliterate them from the annals of history. When you start to make a journey to discover who your family was, you have a responsibility to be the witness to that story. And so 100 years from now, nobody can turn around and say, this never happened, the Holocaust never happened, whatever never happened. Dear Flip, your story is now my story. I will never forget. You cannot rewrite history when you have the facts. And you have the facts when you have the people who were there to tell you what happened.